Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Protecting Your POS Systems from the Next Big Ransomware Threat. Hello, I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Events Specialist at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be a part of today's webcast. Before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure to check the speaker volume, the volume setting on your computer, and your headset to ensure that it is turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's presentation will be using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try refreshing your browser. If you are experiencing technical difficulty, please click on the Help widget. It is the question mark icon on your console and covers common technical issues. If you have a question for our presenters during the presentation, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will have a Q&A session during the last portion of the presentation. And feel free to submit comments via this widget as well. For downloadable PDFs pertinent to today's discussion, click on the Resource widget. Lastly, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with the link to the on-demand version of the webcast and the slide deck. So now let's get on with the presentation. A bit about our speakers. Onyeka Jones is a product manager at Tripwire. She has a deep understanding of the IT security challenges customers face and is passionate about developing software solutions that address customer problem problems. Jason Eiler has nearly 20 years of security software experience and has spent most of this time working directly with hundreds of customers across several industries and international borders. His current role is Manager of Services Solutions at Tripwire. For more information on both speakers, click on the bio widget at the bottom of your console. All right, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Onyeka Jones. Take it away, Onyeka. Thanks, Kate. Today we're going to be talking about ransomware and how PCI compliance can help you protect your POS systems from ransomware. But how did we get here? The first recorded ransomware attack was in 1989 by American evolutionary biologist Dr. Joseph Popp who created a denial-of-service-based attack. He sent out 20,000 floppy disks to health researchers in 90 countries under the guise that it contained a survey. Well, after a fixed number of reboots, the file names and the computers would be encrypted, and victims had to send $189 to a post office in Panama for recovery. 29 years later, ransomware has evolved into a billion dollar business for cyber criminals. And there are, similarities, there are some similarities with the first ransomware attack. For example, healthcare is still a major target for ransomware. In May last year, WannaCry exploited a known Windows vulnerability to infect thousands of computers around the world and crippled the UK's NHS. Shortly after, NotPetya leveraged the same vulnerability to attack banks and POS systems and airports and pharmaceuticals, and these attacks are only becoming more ubiquitous. These attacks are made possible because victims had weak security controls and outdated operating systems. And there is anticipation that we're going to see even more ransomware attacks on POS systems since the EMV chip cards has made data scraping nearly impossible. Now the question we're all thinking about, can PCI compliance prevent ransomware? Well, one of the benefits of PCI DSS is that it helps to strengthen weaken security controls. For example, PCI 3.2, the latest revision to PCI, has provisions for two-factor authentication, preventing weak passwords, and restricting access to cardholder information. 
So compliance with PCI helps organizations implement and strengthen controls that would otherwise have been ignored. Secondly, PCI compliance also helps to reduce the attack surface. One of the ways that organizations can efficiently comply with PCI is by reducing the cardholder data footprint and only making cardholder data available on systems where necessary or using cryptographic hashes instead of account numbers for, tran for transaction searches. Now this helps to reduce the attack surface and reduce the time to achieve compliance. PCI also introduces configuration controls and change process controls. Configuration controls helps to ensure that all computing systems in the cardholder data environment are configured correctly. On the other hand, change process controls help to ensure that all changes to those computing systems in the cardholder data environment were adequately tested, authorized, and verified. Now, some organizations focus on just passing the PCI audit and proving compliance at that point in time. And that often leads to behavior like this, where there is a lot of effort expended to pass the audit, and then over time, configuration changes push the environment out of compliance, and frankly, makes those environments less secure and increases cybersecurity risk. The result is that the next time there's an audit, there's even more effort, more time, more resources that needs to be expended to achieve compliance. Yes, compliance with PCI confers great benefits, but it's not without its challenges. First is there's a lot of time and effort that's often required to attain compliance. And additionally, configuration changes in your environment could take your systems out of compliance, making it difficult to, one, remain compliant, and secondly, making that next audit all the more difficult. And even when compliance with PCI DSS is achieved, it's easy to be lulled into a false sense of security, thinking that just being compliant results in a secure environment. And although the adoption of PCI DSS by an organization will most likely improve its security posture, being compliant with, with PCI DSS at a point in time or just passing the audit doesn't mean the organization is secure. And the technical skills gap, the lack of cybersecurity resources to address this risk and to be compliant actually compounds these challenges. Rather than a point in time approach to PCI compliance that leads to increased cybersecurity risk and results in higher levels of effort to pass the next audit, it's important that organizations take the approach of continuous compliance, leveraging PCI not just to pass an audit, but actually as a means of improving your security posture. Continuous compliance lowers the cost of staining compliance, it improves your security posture, and it reduces risk in your environment. The PCI Security Standard Council states that PCI should be implemented into business as usual activities to ensure that security controls continue to be properly implemented. In other words, continuous compliance every day. By focusing on security rather than just checking a box, compliance becomes a byproduct of security and helps you reduce cybersecurity risk. Now I've shared with you the benefits of PCI and the challenges. How can we help you achieve PCI compliance in a way that goes beyond just checking a box and actually makes your environment secure?
Tripwire Expert Ops can help you address the challenges of adhering to PCI while ensuring continuous compliance. One of the challenges is the time and effort required to achieve and maintain compliance, while Expert Ops is a managed service that delivers the industry's best file integrity monitoring solution and configuration management solution with personalized consulting to address your particular business needs and compliance goals. For example, Expert Ops would help you ensure that all your critical assets, your file systems, your databases, your POS devices are in compliance with PCI, not just at a point in time, but continuously to ensure that configuration changes in your environment does not affect your compliance and security posture. Another challenge is that audits can be tedious. Expedals provides customized and actionable reports and provides auditors with evidence of compliance. And because we know that compliance does not necessarily mean that your environment is secure, your designated Tripwire expert will provide recommendations to improve your security posture and ensure that the latest patches are deployed. And as I mentioned, the cybersecurity skills gap, that lack of resources to address cybersecurity risk, makes it difficult to achieve PCI compliance. While the Tripwire expert will act as an extension of your team, prioritizing your work efforts, managing critical escalations, and presenting results to stakeholders. Now, I will turn it over to Jason Eiler, who will share with you more details about how Expert Ops can help you with PCI compliance. Thanks, Onyeka. All right, so we've heard a little bit about uh, what Expert Ops is and some and a uh, high level of um, how it works. So let's talk a little bit more detail about what you get out of that. Um, there's a lot of pretty significant benefits that Expert Ops offers to um, to customers. One of the main um, outcomes of this process that you interact with is we provide personalized reports and alerts directly to your inbox. Um, Tripwire Enterprise has very comprehensive and flexible reporting capabilities that can provide visibility either at a very high level, spanning your entire organization, or allow you to drill way down into the, uh, into the details uh, of the bits and bytes of exactly what changed on the system by which individual, at what time, what it was before, what it looks like now. And uh, any level of granularity in between we can provide for you. Uh, so one of the um, expectations of the managed services team that is working with you is understanding what your actual business goals are, what your needs are, and how we can tailor our reporting to provide you the visibility that you need to help you make those meaningful decisions. We can also work with your, uh, with your security and your compliance team to ensure that um, changes and adjustments to your compliance monitoring is handled quickly and efficiently, and uh, that you are given the details about um, your current compliance state and any changes that are occurring on your system or environment um, in a timely and consistent fashion. And we can also work with you to establish kind of a uh, personalized rating and recommendation system for targets your organization wants to achieve. And uh, we can also establish this across different divisions within your organization so that uh, you can determine whether or not, for example, your finance team or your operations team are achieving better success towards their compliance goals than another part of the business to establish some, uh, some validation and comparisons within your organization about how you should be prioritizing the resources. And then finally, as Onyeka mentioned, um, one of the key benefits of a managed service is we have a team of individuals that are directly focused on understanding your needs and working with you to ensure that the tools that are in place 
are tailored to help you achieve those needs. And this, this is not a point-in-time measurement. This is not a one-time uh, initial setup and then you know, everything just goes on autopilot. This is an ongoing process, something that we work with you over time as your organization is a constantly moving target and the security tools that help you validate the controls within your organization have to adapt and adjust as well. That's one of the key values that we provide as part of the, uh, of the Expert Ops Managed Service itself. So let's talk a little bit uh, under the covers a little um, briefly, uh, not in a great amount of detail, but kind of a medium level review of various moving parts for the delivery of this Expert Ops Service. So in the uh, left side, you can see the individual customer environment. These would be the assets in your data center or in your, uh, um, in your domain that need to have security tools um, established and monitored and verified. As you can see, we have a very wide variety of platform and asset coverage. We have uh, uh, the ability to monitor pretty much every platform out there can monitor databases, active directories, point of sale devices. Any and all of those are fair game for expert ops monitoring. So on each of these agents or nearby these uh, assets, we would install one of our uh, agents, um, which would then report through a proxy appliance that we provide. There's a virtualized appliance that we provide to you, and we work with your team to get it set up and provisioned properly. Connection gets routed up to our firewall to our gateway up in our cloud environment. From there, depending on the uh, credentials that are provided and the address that you're coming from, that will route that inbound connection over to your particular dedicated Tripwire Enterprise console. So every customer has their own discrete, independent instance of Tripwire Enterprise. This is not a multi-home solution. This is not a... Um, a uh, situation where you are sharing the same resources with dozens of other customers. So each one is, entire, is in his own sandbox, entirely isolated from others, so there's no potential for any, any crossover or any inappropriate exposure. That kind of covers how the data gets from your environment up into the cloud uh, instance. Now let's talk, about a, talk a little bit about how you yourself would access that. So, from your environment, this um, icon represents the actual customer, the user of this service. So the way they communicate is we provide you with a discrete, uh, personalized URL. And then that URL would connect you up to our, um, to our portal on our, in our cloud environment, which will then process a dual-factor authentication. On validation, then you get um, deposited directly into your particular console, and you will see the dashboards and the home pages that we've constructed for you. This is available 24-7 at any time, and log in, pull up this information, and get a immediate sense of what's going on in your environment, are there any meaningful changes that you need to address, what's your current compliance posture, and so forth. In addition, the engineering team um, our managed service engineers, uses a very similar process to connect with a console. Uh, they also have uh, the same security layers of uh, direct credentials as well as two-factor authentication. And as part of their daily operational process, they'll be logging in and managing the Tripwire Enterprise instance to ensure that all of your agents all your assets are reporting in properly, that there's no meaningful errors, that any new assets that you've onboarded or old ones that you've retired will be properly uh, designated and addressed within the console. Make sure that at all times, to the best of our abilities, we are covering the assets that matter. We are down over of not spending unnecessary resources on assets that are no longer, um, either no longer operational or no longer in production, and that the scope and depth of monitoring in place aligns with what your specific needs are. All right, so 
I know there may be uh, there's a lot of other potential potential information on here. We don't really need to go into it in too much more detail. But uh, as Kate mentioned at the outset, if you have any particular questions or you want to uh, um, dig into any of these areas in more detail, you can use the Q and A, or we will be available for follow up after. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about the different levels of service that are available through Expert Ops. Um, there's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all managed service. Customers have a um, very thorough, very high level of uh, need and looking for a, a very different level of engagement uh, from the managed service engineer to uh, you know, make sure that the service is suitably embedded in their environment and is accomplishing all of their particular needs. Whereas another customer may just be looking for um, a simple validation of security controls to, uh, you know, it's maybe on a quarterly basis, maybe on a monthly basis. They're not really necessarily looking for that same level of engagement. So we have a number of different service tiers to help us match the, um, the level of service that is delivered to the customer um, aligned to their particular needs. So we have the essential service tier. This is really kind of the, uh, the basic entry level. This is for folks who don't really need a whole lot. All they really need is just uh, confidence that all of their assets are being monitored appropriately and that their, the change alerts are coming in as needed and uh, you know that the scope stays appropriate, that new things are properly being added to the scope, old things are being retired, and that's really about it. There's a lot of customers where that's, that's the extent of their need for FIM uh, or PCI compliance monitoring. Right. I don't want to really say checkbox customers, but this, you know, there's definitely a need for a service level that is appropriate to that reduced, uh, reduced scope. So Essential Tier offers that um, and pretty much only that. Then we have the Advanced Tier. Here you get everything from Essential. Here's where we start getting a little bit more engaged with your process. We work with you on an ongoing basis to ensure that your reporting is uh, appropriately tuned and being delivered to the right people. Um, we have dedicated uh, problem resolution uh, support at this at this tier as well. So any issues that surface, uh, we'll work with you. Um, be very responsive and, in fact, be as proactive as possible where we can. Notice anything that is looking like it may surface into a um, into a challenge for you later. We'll reach out to you and work with you towards a resolution. Also at the advanced tier. We start bringing to bear some of the other uh, extensions and add-ons to our core products that can help tremendously with the uh, with automation of um, change monitoring and of compliance reporting. Two of these utilities in particular, uh, we have DSR, which you may know, also known as Dynamic Software Reconciliation. This is a utility that helps validate changes made for Windows hotfixes. Or OS patches are properly identified and reconciled. We also have a utility called Event Sender, what we would use for integrations with a SIM. Um, if you have a reporting solution like ArcSight or Splunk, uh, this is the tool that we would use to feed clients and change information from Expert Ops into your existing on-prem or your cloud-based um, um, them for a single pane of glass visibility. Uh, so those utilities are built in at the advanced tier, the additional costs associated. And then we have the advanced plus tier. This is really kind of our white glove service. Now this is where we are very deeply engaged with you to understand what your particular needs are, and we'll provide you with best practice guidance um, in alignment with those needs. We can also help with change reconciliation and provide uh, recommendations around um, specific compliance remediation tasks um, to ensure that you know, there's, there are many different dials that can be adjusted. There's a, achieving effective compliance is a, uh, it can be a pretty substantial feat 
for an organization, especially if this is the first time you've had to undergo this level of scrutiny. And it can be difficult to know where to start. So our managed service engineers have that level of expertise and experience to help you establish a prioritized punch list of what, um, what fixes need to be put in place, what, uh, what steps will get you the greatest bang for the buck towards your compliance goals. And also at the Advanced Plus tier, we have um, the potential for integrations with other change management or ticketing systems. So if you're using something like ServiceNow, or if you're using Remedy, and you have invested in those solutions to manage your change control workflow, we can integrate expert ops with those solutions to ensure that changes that were appropriately um, validated and um, deployed to the systems in your environment are automatically reconciled against the changes that Tripwire Enterprise detects. And uh, this way, it'll let, so the capability of integration with the ticketing system as well as the leveraging of Windows patch reconciliation can greatly help apply the focus on only the changes that really matter. One of the challenges with a lot of uh, FIM monitoring solutions, it's really, really easy to detect when something has changed on a system. The challenge is knowing whether or not that change is appropriate, what the impact of that change is, and how you should respond to it. And that is one of the significant values that uh, the Tripwire can offer here, is we have the technology and we have the expertise to help you effectively zero in on the changes that are most impactful to your environment and that are most worthy of uh, a timely security response. All right, and tying back to the focus of um, uh, PCI DSS compliance, um, expert ops as a capability can support all of the uh, all the technical and many of the process requirements um, and expectations on your organization for um, demonstrating and um, ensuring continuous long-term compliance. So as Onika mentioned, um, compliance itself is not a guarantee to security. Just because you're compliant doesn't really mean you're secure. However, if you go the other direction, you can get a lot greater success. Um, the intent of compliance is really to provide some assurance that the necessary security controls in, are in place and that uh, the due diligence is being um, achieved and is being conducted to secure the environment uh, as well as customer information within that environment. And so if the goal is to establish a secure environment, then the compliance validation of that, uh, that uh, success is really just, it's a documentation exercise, right? It's just demonstrating that you've already accomplished the high level goal. And so it's one thing to be secure. It's another thing to um, have that compliance validation. And it's yet another to be able to demonstrate and report effectively on that compliance. And that is also an area where a lot of organizations can struggle because uh, it can be um, easy to focus your efforts on, on the targets for compliance. But if you don't have an effective way to report on that, to prove and provide evidence of that compliance, that can still result in an audit failure. So this is an area where um, expert ops can really assist with that process. And also, we, we are looking uh, at Expert Ops as an ongoing partnership, as an ongoing collaboration between our engineers and your team to ensure that we can provide you consistent, continuous value throughout the duration of the service. So we want to work closely with you to adjust as your organizational needs change, as staff rotates in and out, um, 
to get new folks onboarded and new assets properly incorporated into our scope um, so that at any point in time, you're getting the greatest value possible out of your FIM and your SCM monitoring. All right. So um, I think with that, um, we can probably move on to Q&A. So let's see, there's been a few questions so far. All right, we have a question. Um, someone has both PCI and SOX compliance requirements. Can you use expert ops to help me achieve both, or do you have to make a choice? Um, there's no need to make a choice. Uh, this solution is more than capable of providing um, documentation and validation of as many different security or compliance frameworks as you may be subject to. We have many customers uh, using, using our technologies who are subject not simply to PCI or SOX, they may also have HIPAA, uh, they may be under NERC compliance uh, obligations, they may have their own internal hardening guidelines built upon CIS standards or other vendor hardening standards. Any and all of those are able to be um, forced and reported on through the same mechanism. So what we would probably do is create a separate dashboard. So you would have your PCI dashboard and you would have your SOX dashboard. And then we would tailor the reports within and the audience for those different dashboards to ensure that the information is getting to the proper people in the proper time frame. Right. Another question about um, architecture. Um, say it, Follows saying most of my assets are in a data center, but we're moving part of our infrastructure to a cloud provider. So how would expert ops work in this center? All right, so in this situation, what we would do is uh, for every location where you have assets that need coverage, we would provision one of our appliances, a virtual appliance that would reside in your environment near those assets. and uh, there's no limit to the number of appliances that we would be able to provide for you. We scale that based on the size and complexity of your environment. So what we would do is you have, say, a portion of your assets in a data center. Those assets would be reporting up through one particular appliance. You have another set of assets that are up in a cloud provider. Maybe it's Google, maybe it's Azure, uh, maybe it's AWS. We would provision a, a separate, distinct virtual appliance and work with you to provision that asset and configure it appropriately in your cloud environment, cohabitating with those cloud-based resources to ensure that that information can flow into our console as well. Once the data gets into our console, then um, they're, they're basically on even footing with each other and we can construct the same reports by the same change um, monitoring rules and compliance uh, reporting across all of them. Okay, so um, another question. If I'm an existing customer, how would I migrate to expert ops? So, um, yeah, we have a pretty sizable number of existing Tripwire customers, and this solution is very suitable for them as well. There's a lot of organizations that really like the value provided by Tripwire Enterprise, but they don't necessarily have the resources to get the most out of it, you know, where they, uh, or they maybe are going through um, um, staff resourcing issues, and uh, maybe the fellow who owned the product is no longer with, uh, no longer with the company, and is now looking for someone else to, to take it on and uh, um, take ownership of that solution. Most organizations manage that pretty well, uh, but for some it can be a struggle and there's a lot of value that, is, that can be seen um, in having a managed service step in and take over. So the way that process would work is uh, we would work with you to review the existing scope of your solution, taking a look at the rules that are in place, the reporting that you have right now, uh, the compliance policies that are in place, and we go through a tune-up and validation process make sure that everything is properly dialed in. Then we would clone that configuration 
and move it up into your dedicated cloud console. Work with you. You would not need to reinstall any agents on your assets. You would provision a proxy appliance, install in your perimeter, and then re reconfigure those agents to feed their data up through the proxy into the cloud. Up there, we would have the same organizational structure as your existing on-prem instance. We have the same asset tags. We would have the same reporting framework, uh, the same change monitoring rules, and so forth. Once the agents report in, they would get a clean baseline, and then we'd start our uh, we start the new reality of monitoring with expert ops. And uh, at that point, in, rather than um, to receive your alerts and to um, pull up the reports and run them as you wish, rather than pulling up the URL for your own internal instance, you would simply use the URL that we provide for you that points up to the cloud. Other than that, it should be a very seamless. All right. So um, I think we're probably, uh, probably good on this for the moment. And so. Um, Thank you very much. As we mentioned before, we are uh, definitely available for additional follow-up and additional conversations. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Kate for some additional closing comments. Thank you so much, Jason. And uh, I'd like to thank both of our presenters today, Onyeka Jones and Jason Eiler. Thank you both so much. Um, and our audience, thank you for taking the time out today to spend with us for this webinar. We hope you found this presentation informative and useful to you. As Jason mentioned, um, both of our presenters are available for questions um, via their email. And as I mentioned earlier, I'll be sending out a follow-up email with a link to the on-demand version of the webcast and the slide deck. Also, if you'd like to receive a proof of attendance for this webcast, please respond to that follow-up email. We do hope that you'll join us for future webinars. Check out the schedule at tripwire.com. Also check out our blog, The State of Security, to, to see the latest in security news, as well as thought-provoking security topics. Thank you, and have a great day.